All right, next up is color balance. So this is a picture that I just kind of scribbled a couple weeks ago. It's not finished at all. It is totally, it, it's in a lovely mess. It's, it can go so many different places. I love pictures that are, you know, just kind of in the middle like this. Um, so anyway, so you can see that I, I almost have it monochromatic here. It's, it's just got some green and some yellow and, you know, I, I, I wanted to experiment with the green color, but you know, maybe, maybe I should take it a different direction. And so the other day I started messing with a color balance layer on top of everything and I ended up, um, ended up coming up with this, which is a color combo that intrigues me and it makes me think maybe I should go in that direction. And so what I would do from here is I would take these colors as kind of a launching point for me to just start making my own colors. Like, you see how these new colors are here? I wouldn't just use the colors that the computer gave me. I would take that idea and I would run with it and I would do my own thing with it. But anyway, let me just show you how I, how I made that adjustment really quick. So I'm not, let's see, let's go to, again, new adjustment layer. This time we're going to go to color balance. Alright, so color balance, you see there's this little box and it's got three different thingamadoohickeys here. <laughs> so just start sliding them around. Where do you want it to go? More, uh, more bluish, more reddish, just... And I, I, you know, I'm just kind of bouncing between the two. Which, do, which extreme looks better? Do I want it to go more blue? Do I want it to go more red? Well, I don't know. Something about the warmer look of things actually kind of intrigues me. So, um, let's do it here too. Huh. And I just, I just go with my gut instinct most of the time. So, what would look better? And notice at the top here it says midtones, shadows, highlights. By default, it'll go to midtones first. And I just want to, I, I, I almost always adjust the midtones, but I just want to warn you, you can adjust the shadows and highlights too. But the more adjusting you do, the more extreme the changes will look meaning the worst they'll probably end up looking. So keep your editing here to kind of a minim minimum. Notice in midtones, I could really drag things around to the extreme left or right, and it, you know, we could play with it here. If I move on to shadows on top of that, though, the range of acceptableness becomes a little bit smaller. So let's just toggle back and forth here. Toggle, toggle, toggle. And I really don't know what it's going to look like. I'm just going with what, I'm just on the fly, just going with what my eyes like right now. And see, look at how overexposed that is. If I go all the way to that bluish color. Then this orange, there's something interesting about it, so I want to keep that somehow. Extreme green, not good. Extreme magenta, not good either, but I like it. I don't know why, I just do. And it looks like I'm kind of, it's like my brain is kind of leaning toward this yellow versus purple thing, which, you know, complementary colors, I guess that's what they're called. Yeah, that's a good theory. Or not. Let's go with it. So do I want this? No. I don't know. And now I'm making up my mind, oh, as you can see, how indecisive. Do I want it cooler? Do I want it warmer? I want it, I don't know, I want it both. <laughs> Dang it. I can't have everything. I have to choose. All right, we'll keep it there. So let's compare or yesterday versus today. Well, apparently yesterday I was in kind of a bluish green mood. Today I'm in a purple yellow mood. And honestly, I, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure which one I would choose. Something interesting that you can do with these adjustment layers, too, is you can change the opacity on them. Like, so if you're an indecisive freak, you can, like me, you can, oh, well, I want both of these, but I can't have both. Well, you sort of can. Um, by changing one of them to, like, opacity 50%. So, totally blue, totally whatever. Just have it kind of in a happy, a happy place in the middle. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, do I like it? Sure, maybe, I don't know. But um, again, there's stuff that I would want to do with the colors. Like all of these colors seem to be warm, and it's usually good to have warm and cool, so we'll have to figure that out. Part of That's also part of the reason why I wouldn't just take these colors and accept them as is right now. 
I take them as a starting point and then just do my own thing with it. All right, I just have a few more tricks to show you, um, to make sh tricks that you can use to make sure that your picture is going the right direction while you're making it. So um, this trick is fairly common. It's um, flipping the ca flipping the canvas um, sideways so that you're seeing it um, from a different rotation. So if you go to image, image rotation, flip canvas horizontal, that does the job. I use this so much I have a hotkey to F5. So I hit F5 and woo, it's flipped. And this really really helps to um, it really helps to pull you out of the picture sometimes when you're drawing or oftentimes when you're painting something your your mind is so you're so used to looking at it that your mind kind of gets drawn into it and you lose your objectivity and you start to focus on little things instead of the picture as a whole so this is a trick to basically wrench your brain out of it look at it from a whole different perspective and and, and it gets you to think oh well this needs to change uh, oh but I really like this over here I think I could take it farther um, I have I have flip vertical also hotkeyed as well as uh, basic 90 degree rotation, um, and these are all set to F3, F4, and F5. So uh, that is a very easy trick for you to take advantage of. Now I'm going to show you a little trick that I kind of picked up while watching a Dylan Cole DVD. Um, he's a really awesome Matt Penner, by the way. Um, look him up; he's awesome. But um, anyway, this is uh, so this is a way that you can alter your picture after you've already painted into it a good deal. So say I'm doing this landscape here and I want the uh, I want the landscape to extend to the left. So how would I how would I do that? Well, let's take a look at what we can do here. Oh sorry. I'll keep it in this view. So what I'm gonna do is first off I'm gonna merge all the visible layers. So I'm gonna press Control Alt Shift E and make all of the other ones invisible. So now it's just all in one layer. And I'm going to change the canvas size, which I have hotkey to F2. I think that that's a default, actually. And let's say that we want ju to just add um, some blank canvas space to the left side of the picture. So I orient the canvas to the right, so it sticks to the right. And we'll change the width to something like 140%. OK, so now I've got this blank space. But I don't want to have to manually paint over all this stuff, selecting every individual little hue. It's a pain in the butt. It takes too much time, and this isn't a final solution, but it'll it'll do wonders in getting me started. So press M for marquee, and just select a very small little space over here, um, just along the edge. And now press V, which will change it to the transform tool and just drag it over. And voila! You, um, it's obviously not finished, but I can at least work with the colors that I already had down on the canvas to get started, so I don't have to be so anal about things, because really speed is a big element here, and any shortcut you can take, well, shortcuts aren't the final answer like I said, but they really help to shave time down. Like this plant here, uh, yeah, these colors probably aren't going to work. Um, but that's something I can handle, something I can deal with.